one of the annoying things about CSS is the syntax that we have to use to cascade our styles. In this case, we're going to create a box and we're going to give it a background of black and we'll give it a height and width of 150 pixels. And now we have two black boxes. If we want to go and make one red, we'll have to create a separate class for that. And if we want to put any pseudo classes on this red box, such as a hover, we'll have to continue to cascade down these styles. And this is just a simple example, but with a deeply nested page, we can get really out of hand. And really, this is the reason why there's nesting inside of preprocessors. In this example, we're going to make two boxes, one with red and one with blue, and they're going to have separate hover functionalities. In the HTML, we have the box of red, and now we'll add the one for the box of blue. We just have a couple flat UI colors as well as some style specific variables that we'll be using for this. The base style for the box won't actually take any background color because our child specific classes are going to handle that. We'll set a height and width to the main margin. Inside of here we can create the nested style where we can set our box to red. We have the style specified inside of the box, but we're not seeing the color get applied. And that's because this current syntax says, look for a child inside of the box with a class of box red. And we're not looking for any children. We're just looking for a div with a class of box and that also has a class of box red. So to set the chain, we need to use the ampersand. With this ampersand, we see the box turn red and we can do the same thing for the blue box. This syntax is a lot more succinct. It makes sense that we would put all of our box related classes inside of the box class rather than having to specify that long chain. Now let's go into the HTML and we're gonna add a span to each one of these boxes. We'll set the first one to red and the second one to blue. And we'll set some styles for that. So we'll set the color to be the flat UI color cloud. And now if we wanted to specify that span specifically, we can now say span and we don't need to use the ampersand because it is a child element. And inside of here, we can set a font size or anything we really want. So we can set it to something big like 32 pixels, and it applies for both of the spans. So it's important to understand what's going on here. We have a class of box, and inside of there, we have base styles. Underneath those base styles, we have a child element named span, and that is any span inside of a class of box. Below that, we have chain classes, and we use the ampersand. The box blue and the box red aren't styles for child elements. They're the style for the box elements that also have the class of box red or box blue. Knowing all this now, how would we set up a pseudo class for hover state? Since a hover state is applied directly to the element, we can use the ampersand. Now, anytime that any element with a class of box gets hovered over, it turns black. And if we want to set a specific background color for each hover, we can go inside the color specific classes. We can nest inside here and set the hover state. We can set that to a lighter red and then we can just copy that over and we can set it to a lighter blue down here. Now when we hover over, we get the lighter red as well as the lighter blue. So far nesting has been pretty easy because we haven't really been dealing with any deep nested elements. If we go back into the HTML, we can create a list below our container. We'll have a div with the ID of other, and now we'll set a specific list. We'll have an unordered list with the class of list, and then each list item has a class of box. The first one will be box red, and the second one will be box blue. So we'll go down and we'll set styles specific to this container. We'll have an ID of other, and we want to specifically style the list items. So we can say ULLI, and then inside of here, we can set any specific styles. We may want these to be a little taller, so we'll set the height to 300 pixels. And as you can see right here, we skipped a step in nesting. We went straight to ULLI. In some small cases, this is fine. But if we want to set base styles to the unordered list, we have to change the structure. We would have to delete this unordered list, and then add it up here, and then copy the list item inside of it. Now inside of the unordered list, we could finally set something like a margin. So when you're creating nested styles, it's usually a good idea to specify each nested layer. If you skip a step, you might have to go back and you'd have to make some serious changes to your structure. So remember, when we're creating nested styles, anything that goes inside of the nest 
is a child element, unless it uses the ampersand, and that specifies that it's a chained class. And it's a good practice to separate out each level of the nest. This way we keep ourselves from having to go back and change up all of our structure. If you have any questions, leave a comment or hit me up on Twitter.